Kubana Bay has become the dance floor, the nightclub, uh, the meeting ground for both male and female dolphins when the timing is right. So we are going to uh, see if we can find any of the females and males together. Marine biologist Phil Coulthard moved from his hometown of Cairns 16 years ago to work at the Dolphin Discovery Centre in Bunbury, a two-hour drive south of Perth, Western Australia. I have enjoyed the company of a number of dolphins since they were born, so I've actually followed the progress from a calf to a juvenile to an adult. So I do feel quite close. In fact, uh, I, I, would, I would lie if I did admit to being a little bit emotional when I see some of the young boys and girls that I grew up with. The natural shelter of Bunbury's Kumbana Bay provides a perfect resting ground for hundreds of bottlenose dolphins who gather in summer to breed, give birth and nurture their young. Phil believes it's the best location in the world to view wild dolphins. It is all because of the fact that it's a small location, because of the fact that uh, the dolphins come here for their breeding patterns and behaviours and seasons, and also because it's shallow, it's calm and it's protected. Uh, and finally, because of the estuary environment that dumps the nutrient flow into the bay, there's a productivity which provides a massive food source. But as Bunbury continues to grow, now the second largest city in Western Australia, so pressure is mounting on the dolphins in Kumbana Bay. A paper published by the Cetacean Research Unit at Murdoch University in 2016 reported that Bunbury was forecasted to have 38 dolphins after 100 years an 83% decline. After 300 years, there were forecast to be six individuals with a 96% probability of extinction. Uh, you've got these dolphins in the middle of so many different groups. You've got the industry, you've got the commercial users, you've got the recreational boaties, uh, you've got um, poor facility, you've got tourists, um, you've got just locals who live their life in the area as well. Everyone's taken their little piece of the dolphins world and potentially everyone has an impact on the decline of the population in the future. The research paper concluded that the decline was due to disturbances in the dolphin's reproduction cycle and limiting those disturbances would have a positive impact on reducing the decline. Although Phil admits that the tourists the Dolphin Discovery Centre brings into the bay contributes to the disturbance, he also believes the revenue it brings allows them to play the role of representing the dolphins amongst Bunbury's competing interests. Yeah. That's, that's our main role to ensure that every one of these different users of the bay and those who impact on dolphins uh, does have a facilitator of some sort, someone to uh, work with them, to provide information, uh, to assess, uh, to hopefully take a little bit of, of uh, everything from everybody to keep everything going. So ensuring that uh, we exist and we remain here to work with all of these groups to ensure dolphins are getting a fair go. As summer kicks in, so the dolphin dance floor is starting to heat up. Phil is hoping that his work and that of his colleagues at the Dolphin Discovery Centre will ensure that it keeps busy for many years to come. Thinking 30 years from now, um, I would like to think that those dolphins that I saw as a, as a new calf and also as a juvenile when I first started are still here. Dolphins live 40 to 50 years. So uh, in the next 30 years, I would not like to see any unnatural or human-induced uh, impacts that have decreased any of the dolphins individually uh, or as a population.